Hello, this is Jack Jackson. We're going to continue looking at our first set of videos for uh, geometry. This video, we're going to be talking about diagrams, drawings, and constructions. On one level, visual illustrations, including dynamic and static diagrams, drawings, and constructions, are superfluous in the study of geometry. In a formal study of geometry, the proofs of the propositions and the solutions to problems cannot rely on the visual illustration. They must be complete on their own. Nothing can be assumed from a figure. Everything known and deduced must be carefully stated and justified in the proof. The proof should make perfect sense if the visuals are completely absent. In fact, the proof may actually be valid for several completely different visualizations. In this way, geometry is a very pure, abstract form of mathematics. The great 20th century uh, mathematician David Hilbert once said that one should be completely comfortable replacing the words point and line with coffee cups and tables. On the other hand, one of the most beautiful things about geometry is its visual aspect. The visuals can often provide insights and inspiration for ideas for proofs and counterexamples. One's canonical visual example of an object can clearly affect seeing geometric connections and properties. We want to use GeoGebra to create dynamic visualizations of geometric figures so that we see geometric figures as being able to be morphed into infinitely many examples with the desired properties. We will use figures carefully constructed in GeoGebra to allow us to experiment, discover properties, make and test conjectures, and then help us record and dynamically illustrate proofs. A correctly constructed GeoGebra activity allows us to visually test thousands of examples very quickly. If the conjecture is true in all of these examples, then we have established a level of verification that is well beyond drawing a few examples. We may very well be convinced of the veracity of the conjecture, convinced that it's true, without a formal proof. Nevertheless, a formal proof is still required, not so much to convince, but rather to explain why and how the proposition is true. When we're making visuals in GeoGebra, we need to be careful to make a distinction between what I'm going to call drawing and constructing. We may draw a figure which temporarily has certain characteristics. However, if we can manipulate the figure so that it no longer has the desired characteristics, then it has been drawn, not constructed appropriately. In contrast, if we carefully construct a figure so that it has the desired characteristics, then when we manipulate it, the figure will continue to have those desired characteristics. However, we also want to, the figure to be general, so that we want to be careful not to build in additional non-desired characteristics. So an example I'm going to show you here in just a minute, suppose the task is to construct a general Euclidean isosceles triangle. Then what we should be able to do is to drag around the vertices and the figure will dynamically transform in such a way as to remain an isosceles triangle, but it can become any isosceles triangle. If the figure loses the property that it's a triangle or that one pair of sides are not congruent, then not enough structure was constructed into the figure. On the other hand, if the triangle is always an equilateral triangle, then it is an isosceles triangle because equilateral triangles are isosceles, but it cannot become any isosceles triangle. In this case, too much structure has been built into the figure. So you have to hit that sweet spot so that you put in everything that you want, but not extra stuff. And understanding this distinction will become extremely important as we continue working with GeoGebra. I'm going to start having you construct some GeoGebra stuff uh, next week for my uh, geometry students. So we can, for now, go to this, uh, this link here, and we can look at the uh, the uh, figures, the geo, geo, geo activity that I'm going to show you right now. So here is uh, when you click on that link and you open this activity, you come to this uh, GeoGebra setting. Drawing versus constructing in the drag test. And here are the questions. What are these objects and are they all the same? Well, if you look at it, 
at the moment it looks like we have four congruent equilateral triangles. Okay, or is that what we really have? So let's click on this little arrow tool up here, which we can move things around, and let's see what happens. Oh, wait a minute. This one's not even a triangle at all, is it? Really, it's just, just three line segments that can be manipulated. It was only temporarily drawn to be an equilateral triangle. It's really three arbitrary line segments. That's not an, that's not an isosceles triangle. What about this one? Okay, when we do the drag test to it, oh, okay, this time it really is a triangle, but it's not necessarily an isosceles triangle. For example, uh, that's not isosceles. So in both of those cases, there was not enough structure built into it. How about this one? What happens when we manipulate? Oh, that's interesting. That one looks like an isosceles triangle. If you look what I'm doing right now, this might give you a hint of how this was constructed. Okay, yeah, it stays a triangle. It stays an isosceles triangle. These two sides right here and here are always congruent to each other. But it gets any isosceles triangle we want, right? We can change that angle at the top. It's still isosceles. We can make the sides longer or shorter. That's okay, It's still, but it's still isosceles. All right, what about this one? Yeah, this one also stays isosceles. But, in fact, this one always stays equilateral. Too much structure has been built into this particular one so that when we move things around, not only does it stay isosceles, not only do, do these two sides, for example, congruent, but they're congruent to this third side as well. That's too much structure. It is an isosceles triangle, but it's not a general isosceles triangle. So if the, if the task was to construct an isosceles triangle only this only this one uh, only this one right here this one right here would be the one that would be acceptable the others would not be acceptable so the first thing I'm going to do whenever I uh, look at a, a, a GeoGebra um, activity and the first thing you should do too is just start clicking on things and move things around and see what happens and if it's constructed correctly it will have the right properties and not more than it should have. So that's the definition and the difference between what I would call drawing, something that just temporarily has has the, uh, the properties versus constructing it with the correct properties.